Greetings, role players. This is Seb. Welcome to Null Inquisitor. And today I'm going to make a special video because I've received today a jolt to the brain. Let me explain. First, this video is dedicated to the genius of Mike Pondsmith of Cyberpunk 2020 fame. This guy is a prophet. <laughs> He's a straight up prophet. Let, let's, let's start this story from the beginning. So today, early in the morning, I was browsing Google image to find some, uh, some comics, some RPG comics that I used to enjoy back in the pyramid day the magazine <clears throat> from Steve Jackson Games. The comic is called Murphy's Rules and it is pretty comical. It has all these comics about missing pieces in the rules and things that don't matter, that, that, that don't make sense in, in certain RPGs such as the uh, the rule for example in mecton uh, that allows your vehicle to go faster as the size increase some stuff like that <clears throat> so i was hunting for these uh, comics online and i stumbled upon uh, stumble upon a cover from the pyramid Mag magazine from july august 1993 it was pyramid number two and on the cover of that magazine was a cover from fantastic illustrator timothy bradstreet of vampire the masquerade fame the cover depicted a scene from a typical scene from vampire the masquerade uh, a girl, young woman, being bitten in the neck by a vampire while a, a female vampire was on the other side, maybe waiting for her turn, whatever. Very sensuous uh, picture, done in black and white, pen and ink, and probably, knowing Bradstreet style, a couple of uh, photographic reference. So, the picture grabbed my attention, of course just for its appeal but then on the cover I noticed a um, the title of an article by Jeff Koch about notes he had on designing GURPS Vampire the Masquerade the, the official conversion for, 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 for from Vampire the Masquerade to GURPS so uh, on my uh, break, I I bought the PDF and start reading. And the story is not about that, as Ivan Mike would say. This video is not about that. <laughs> so I'm reading this article, find it fascinating, and then I remember, yeah, I kind of already, I I kind of already read that article somewhere in my brain so it was no new information so I was, I was kind of a little bit disappointed but there was 60 page left of this magazine so I started to browse and I, 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 I fell upon an article that was asking three game designer of the time to ask them what are your vision for the future of RPGs? The three contender were Steve Jackson game, uh, uh, St not Steve Jackson game, but Steve Jackson, the man behind Steve Jackson games, Eric Wujic of uh, Palladium fame and Ember fame, and of course, Mike Pondsmith. So as I'm reading this uh, article, each of the 
game designers went about their vision of role-playing games in the future. Eric Wujic was very about, I don't know, maybe something like, maybe Ember is the future of RPG, RPGs, Ember Diceless. Maybe games in the future won't use dice. Steve Jackson's answers was more in the, 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 the development of the web. Maybe someday we'll be able to play simple games over the web. How, how far he was. <laughs> and then you have the prophet, Mike Pondsmith. And here we go. This is the important part. This guy is brilliant. Brilliant. You will. I hope he will be recognized more than he is because truly this guy have the fingers on the pulse. Really. Not only he wrote Cyberpunk 2020 with a pretty clear vision of the future and his vision is pretty, pretty close to the real thing. We are in... 2021 and I would say pretty close he wrote about cyberspace connecting to the virtual world about uh, digital money in a time where the internet was a new technology only used by science major and, and engineer major in universities and it was very very basic and he was writing about cyberspace and, and all these shit so <clears throat> his vision about the future of rpgs i took a little bit note here he said that maybe in the future we will hit a fourth generation type of game and as I read that, I was very intrigued. He seemed to have uh, this idea about generations of games. I was expecting generations to be maybe changing parading or to be uh, linked to a specific decade, decade like the, the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s. And he has a very cool classification or idea for this. So according to him and this article, the first generation of games were the originator. The games were very war game like and mission oriented. Which is true. The first games like D&D, Tunnels and Trolls were very much an improvement or a, a change or a shift from war games. You just sprinkled a couple of uh, Tolkien monsters, a, uh, an alignment system from uh, Michael Moorcock and, the, 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 and, and some magic system from Jack Vance. And there you go, you had D&D, a weird mix of science, fantasy and everything in between. According to him, the second generation of games came along with a focus on systems. So games like RuneQuest came about, which gave birth to the basic role-playing system, BRP. You had then, I don't know, Champions, who gave birth to the hero system. You had Palladium, of course, and then Ken Gerps very focused on systems systems that were autonomous self-contained capable of doing almost anything brilliant brilliant way of looking at, at role-playing games third generation of games according to him these games are about genre according to him these games started to appear in his era as he was writing this in 1993 so games like vampire the masquerade torg 
I don't know, Shattered Zone, whatever. Games exploring genre. Games like Blood Shadows and stuff like that. And these games had a mechanic less and less and were exploring themes and story and were comparing their stories to narration and, and things like that. And then he proceeds to talk about a new kind of game, a game of the future, according to him. A fourth generation kind of game. And according to him, the fourth kind of games. And there, there, there might be a little surprise here. First, these games of fourth, fourth generation games should be easy to learn. Two, they should have an emphasis on the role play, role playing, playing characters. Three, they should be in detailed world, which we could call ultra niche, specific world. And you know what? When I read this, I recognize story games. My mind was blown. This guy predicted story games way before Baker, Crane, and all the others, 20 years in advance. <laughs> this guy is a genius. <laughs> so I wanted to share that discovery today. Uh, it might not be something spectacular to you or something new to you, but to me, it's, it's like, this guy is a genius. Now, to end the video, uh, I ask myself, what would be a, a fifth generation type of game? And on that, I lean towards Eric Wujic article, which was part of this, uh, this paper. And he was telling that maybe Ember is the, the future. So maybe a fifth generation of game is simply Ember. A game without chance, without dice, but players exchanging currencies at the table, taking in alternance the role of the game master, creating a story together, and being the penultimate opposite of the first generation type of game, which is all about measuring tapes, miniatures, mission, rolling dice, losing your character, making another one on the spot. It seems to me to be the exact opposite. <laughs> so thank you for uh, watching this uh, long ass video. Uh, but that, 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 put, that discovery put a smile on my face and I, and I feel I, I, and I felt like sharing. So uh, thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.